we are well past the halfway mark of this campaign and as expected it got very messy the gloves are off daniel from the guardian one of my favorite publications i might say i'm being sarcastic of course against and then he was for and then he was against and he's for hello how are you going where's your mum or dad this week was all about the cost of living. And there's a searing spotlight on the Reserve Bank today. Reserve Bank boards uh, increased the cash rate by 25 basis points. Mortgage holders paying more in interest on their home loans. It definitely put the squeeze on the coalition who have long argued that they are the better economic managers. So the question remained, who would take responsibility for the rising interest rates? I'm not going to tell them a fairy tale like the Labor Party is. In one instance, Treasurer Josh Frydenberg suggested that rising interest rates was actually the sign of a healthy economy. Today, the Reserve Bank of Australia has reaffirmed Australia's economic strength and Australia's economic resilience. In another instance, Prime Minister Scott Morrison seemed surprised that anyone would think that rising interest rates was a political issue at all. It's not about politics. Sometimes you guys always think, see things through a totally political lens. I don't. Labor pounced on this with a series of zingers. For this guy to say that anything is not political, this is a guy who gets up in the morning and what he has for breakfast is political. This is more baloney than a New York deli. In terms of policy, we actually saw a little bit more of that this week. The coalition announced it would freeze deeming rates over the next two years to help pensioners cope with the rising cost of living. This will benefit around 890,000 Australians. It also pledged to help create the environment for 400,000 new small businesses. That's a net figure over the next five years, but there wasn't a lot of detail as to how that would happen. And population growth would probably account for most of it. After months of Labor trying to make themselves a small target from coalition attacks, they unveiled quite a few policies at their WA campaign launch. And the next Prime Minister of Australia, Anthony Albanese. They have ditched plans to pay superannuation on paid parental leave. But there were plans for childcare, the NDIS and electric cars. But the most notable was on housing. A national shared equity scheme that will provide an equity contribution from the Commonwealth for 10,000 aspiring homeowners on low and middle incomes each and every year. The coalition immediately criticised Labor's housing policy with Scott Morrison even wrongly suggesting... Every time you go to Bunnings and you want to do an improvement on your house, you've got to check with Canberra. The two men vying to be Australia's next treasurer met to debate at the National Press Club. It was all very civil between Josh Frydenberg and Jim Chalmers. He said earlier that he respected me and I want to repay that compliment. I respect him and he does bring a great deal of experience to the role and off camera we actually get on better than probably we do on camera. Journalists though had quite a few digs. Neither of you have actually completely answered John's question. Please don't say it's fully funded. Neither of you are really saying what you're going to do in terms of spending cuts. Thank you to both of you for answering or not answering our questions. That was a theme that carried through for most of the week. On the contest between Labor and Liberals and myself. Albanese faced a line of questioning about why he handed questions to his shadow ministers. I've noticed on several occasions you hand over economic questions to someone else. His rebuke was to say that he had a good team that he could stand beside. You don't see Scott Morrison no, don't, handing Ellie. over to no, anyone don't, during Ellie. this campaign. Scott Morrison can't appear with Josh Frydenberg because Josh Frydenberg doesn't want to be in the same frame as Scott Morrison. The is Albanese up to the job questioning continued with this series of questions on Labor's NDIS policy. What are the six points? The, the six points are what we will do in terms of was outlined by Bill Short. Is this a no, sign that you say you know what one of your policies is? Right. He hit back at the line of questioning at his solo appearance on Q&A. This idea that politics is about 
a, a sort of series of gotchas and, and, and a game playing. And then he seemed to come out swinging the day after, after criticism that he couldn't control the press pack. How are you going to stand up to Xi Jinping if you can't stand up to us? Oh, he's on, asking... All right. He's you get the question, then I'll have the answer. And he's no, I'm in charge. You. Morrison didn't have a great time with the press either this week, particularly on Friday when he faced questioning over whether or not he would remain Liberal leader if the party lost or was in a hung parliament. You say it's a cavalcade of chaos, so will you resign? This is a choice for the Australian people. That's not a yes or no answer, Prime Minister. Well, you, you get to ask the questions. You don't get to say what the answer is. That sounds like you would resign. Well, <laughs> Again, I'll answer the question. We are in the final two-week stretch and pre-polling has opened, which means every single day counts as the leaders slug it out to try and get each and every single undecided voter to come over to their side. It is going to get even rougher, if you can imagine, so strap in.